Grace and peace to you and welcome in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is good to be together. Uh, I know it seems like a broken record when I say that, but I do mean it. Um, so as we come together, there are a few things on our uh, announcements that we need to make sure that we are all aware of. Uh, one, if you are youth age, there is a modification to the schedule this evening. Um, there is no play practice tonight. Instead, all youth need to show up over at the warehouse around no later than 4 o'clock to help um, vendors unload, outload and help clean up. Um, this church has a long history of our youth group helping with that bizarre cleanup, and um, it, is much, it is muchly appreciated. Um, many of the vendors end up giving our youth tips, which go to the youth and youth fund, and um, the library, friends of the library also give us uh, a donation every year for the assistance that they provide. Um, so it's kind of a great way we can be in service to the community around us. Uh, this week, um, for some reason not in the Bolton, there is Bible study this week. And um, it also it is also the third Tuesday luncheon, right? So um, that's an open invitation. Sign up in the back still for the Raleigh Ringers trip. There are a lot of seats left. We need to fill those up. So if you want to go, sign up on there. And if you want to drive, let me know. I can get you checked out in the van. I need a driver. Driver gets to go free. Incentive. So, um, Also, as you see um, on the announcements, there is a couple opportunities for caroling with at the hospital with the clergy association. So... Those dates are there before you, so if you can make any of those, just show up and we'll walk around the hospital um, bringing some Christmas cheer to those who are there. Of course, the, the really big item on our calendar is next Sunday. Um, in case you forgot what next Sunday is, we are celebrating our Heritage Sunday a couple weeks later than normal um, for this special celebration of our centennial um, on this spot. Uh, of course, Bishop Lewis will be with us for that celebration. Uh, and instead of, there will be no 845 service next week. And instead of Sunday school, we'll be doing a rededication service in the chapel. Um, and then we'll have the main service uh, at 11 in here as normal, followed by a fantastic lunch. Um, so, and we're planning for a bunch of people. So just show up, bring your friends, bring your neighbors, bring all the folks that, you, you know, you know that this church means something to them and bring them along because it's going to be a great celebration. And even if the church doesn't mean anything to them yet, it might. So bring them along with you. This is a great Bring Your Friend Sunday. Okay. Um, after church today, real fast staff parish meeting, like two minutes. Um, but we do have our, our church council meeting as well. So we are ready to go for that. Anybody have any other announcements this morning? All right, well, let us prepare ourselves for worship.
Good morning. morning. November 17th, less than a couple weeks till Thanksgiving. Makes me wish I had some of those days back, those December days back that I wished away when I was a kid. (laughs) I'd only be half my age. But as we go forward over the next couple of weeks, giving thanks to God for our many blessings, please don't forget to the most important blessing of all, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So as you are able, please stand and remain standing through the passing of the peace and join me for the call to worship. Sing praises to God, O you saints, and give thanks to God's holy name. We exalt you, O God, for you have restored us to life. We may cry through the night, but your joy comes with the morning. You hear us, O God, and you are gracious in our distress. You turn our mourning into dancing. Our souls cannot be silent. Our God, our Savior, we give thanks to you forever. Our opening hymn is 110, A Mighty Fortress is Our God.
Please join me in the opening prayer. Direct us, O Lord, in all our doings, with your most gracious favor, and further us with your continual help, that in all our works, begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name, and finally, through mercy, obtain everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the peace of Jesus Christ be with you. Please extend that peace to those around you. Peace, brother. Okay, Sandra, even though you're the boss, you need to sit down. <laughs> Our epistle reading this morning is from 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 6 through 13. Brothers and sisters, we command you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to stay away from every brother or sister who lives an undisciplined life that is not in line with traditions that you receive from us. You yourselves know how you need to imitate us because we were not undisciplined when we were with you. We didn't eat anyone's food without paying for it. Instead, we worked night and day with effort and hard work so that we would not impose on you. We did this to give you an example to imitate, not because we didn't have a right to insist on financial support. Even when we were with you, you were given we were giving you this command. If anyone doesn't want to work, they shouldn't eat. We hear that some of you are living an undisciplined life. They aren't working, but they are meddling in other people's business. By the Lord Jesus Christ, we command and encourage such people to work quietly and put forth their own food on the table. Brothers and sisters, don't get discouraged in doing what is right. The word of God for the people of God. Some people meddle in other people's business? No.
So anybody who feels like they were or would, would want to be young enough today to come up and spend a moment with me? Guess not. That's all right. No goldfish for you. Let us um, stand as we are able as we hear these words from the gospel according to Luke. This is from the 21st chapter. And Jesus begins talking about the fate of the temple. Well, some people were talking about the temple, how it was decorated with beautiful stones and ornaments dedicated to God. And Jesus said, as for the things you are admiring, the time is coming when not even one stone will be left upon another. All will be demolished. They asked him, teacher, when will these things happen? What sign will you show us that these things are about to happen? Jesus said, watch out that you aren't deceived. Many will come in my name saying, I'm the one and it's time. Don't follow them. When you hear of wars and rebellions, don't be alarmed. These things must happen first, but the end won't happen immediately. Then Jesus said to them, nations and kingdoms will fight against each other. There'll be great earthquakes and wide scale food shortages and epidemics. There will also be terrifying sights and great signs in the sky. But before all this occurs, they will take you into custody and harass you because of your faith. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will provide you with an opportunity to testify. Make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance. I'll give you words and wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to counter or contradict. You will be betrayed by your parents, brothers and sisters, relatives and friends. And they will execute some of you. Everyone will hate you because of my name. Still not a hair on your head will be lost. By holding fast, you will gain your lives. The word of God for the people of God. Please be seated. What a terrifying picture. 
and what terrifying images are present in this passage from Luke. I mean, wars and insurrections and nations against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms and earthquakes and famine and plagues and signs in the heavens. I almost feel like, you know, Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz, lions and tigers and bears, oh my. I mean, this is a list. And even before all of that, arrests and persecutions of those who call upon Jesus' name. That sounds dreadful. That sounds absolutely terrifying. All right? And yet in the midst of that, there's this message. <coughs> Don't be terrified. What? How can you not be? I think about the, you know, the disciples in Matthew, you can read it in chapter 8, where Jesus is out on the boat with his disciples on the lake. And a big storm comes up and the boat's rocking and shaking and the disciples are freaking out and terrified and don't know what to do. And Jesus says, where's Jesus? He's asleep in the boat. Disciples are going berserk. We're going to die. I don't know what to do. Let's go ask Jesus. And he's asleep. See, disciples are freaking out. They're in panic. And Jesus, well, because he's the heavenly peace that even fear cannot destroy, he's not worried. So the words do not be afraid by that point are somewhat lost. But isn't that a lot like most of us? Anybody seen things around you lately that freak you out? You listen to the news and get all panicked. Right? I mean, am I the only one that even feels remotely like that? I mean, you look at the news and you go, yikes! And yet there's a message from Jesus that says, I got you. We tend to focus on the events. You know, we read the scriptures, and we're just like the people in Jesus' time. When is this going to happen? When's this temple falling? When's when? What? How? Right? They want to know exactly how to know when it's coming. We kind of like to know what's coming, don't we? We want to, at least. Well, at least we think we do. We think we want to know what's coming. Give us a sign. Give us a something. Anybody ever prayed for a sign? I'm the only one. <laughs> Whoa, no hand. This is this, okay. Never mind. You all get this figured out. I'll go home. No. I mean, we pray for a sign. You know, we want a sign. Tell me what's going to happen. I need to know. But even in this case, Jesus is saying, "Don't read too much into the signs because." They're there, but those are not reliable signs of when the end is coming. They're just things that have to happen first. Jesus even warns that people are going to tell you, this is it, this is the end, this is... Don't follow them. They don't know what they're talking about. These are things that have to happen first in God's even better plan of redemption. Now, drama holds our attention, right? So we focus on all these dramatic events. Am I right? Drama must hold our attention because there's an entire industry about ridiculous TV shows that are full of drama that make a mega bucks. Drama sells. Look at the news. The more dramatic the news, the more people watch it. I mean, right? It's our nature. We're drawn to drama. But in this case, Jesus is saying, be careful. 
that the drama doesn't hide the bigger truth. The bigger truth, this Jesus' vision, is that the dramatic events are simply the stage for an even greater drama of God's truth spoken into the world. The events of the world, the things going on around us, the drama, the pain, the suffering, all of that gives us an opportunity to testify to God's work in the world in the midst of it. So Jesus just, I, I didn't make, just make that up. That's what Jesus just said, right? He said, these give you an opportunity to testify. Suffering gives us an opportunity to provide hope. Jesus says, don't worry about what you're going to say. Don't pre-prepare a speech. I'll give you what you need. Well, that's a bit terrifying too, isn't it? Anybody want to go into a courtroom of people accusing you without a prepared speech? <laughs> Not exactly, but that's what, that's what he's saying. He says, I, we got, I got you. That's nuts in our human sense. And the way we play that out is in our interactions with other people. give you a clue in trying to witness to the work of God in our lives, there's a couple ways we can do that in terms of providing this future and this, you know, this, this hope of the future, right? We can go, are you saved? Or, how's your family? How are you doing? Which one's warmer and more hopeful? Yeah. You see, the world we're in is a very different world than most of us remember. Would you agree? There was a time when if you built the church, people showed up. That did exist. I've heard myths. <laughs> it did exist. There was a time when that happened, and we think we still live there, and we don't. I had a whole lot of training events and things in the last few weeks that have all pointed in the exact same direction, which makes me think there's something important to take from that. One of the things that I'll share with you now, there's a lot more of that coming in the future, but one of the things I'll share with you now is something that comes out of the church in England, um, England is about 10 years ahead of us in terms of the secularization of the society. So they've already done a lot of what we're starting to f feel now. They've already been through it. Um, and so here's a startling statistic that comes from there. And it's um, not quite there yet here, but it's awful darn close. It's called 10 10 40 40. In other words, 10% of people are active in pews regularly in church. 10%. Okay? You're the 10%, okay? <laughs> so um, there's another 10% who are active, who consider church home, but are infrequently in attendance. Sometimes these are the people we see at Christmas and Easter, funerals and weddings. Or if there's a crisis in their lives, they show up in church because they recognize that the church has an, isn't a, there's something important about it in their life. They just aren't here regularly because of whatever. Okay, so that's twenty percent of the society. How much does that leave? Eighty. Okay, so forty percent, half of that left over, the remaining eighty, right? Forty percent. Don't come to church. Some of those don't come to church even if they wanted to. Can you guess why? They work. How many stores and restaurants are open right now? 
How many people are at work right now? Even if they wanted to be here, they can't, right? Okay. Another part of that 40% are people who will not come back, to, who have been in church and don't come on purpose. Often because they have been hurt or injured or something has happened that has made them sour to the idea of church. That's not a great statement about the church, by the way. <laughs> so that's 40% of society are people who either can't be here, even if they wanted to be, or just aren't, don't want to come, even though they're aware of church and will consider themselves Christian. That still leaves how much? 40%. 40% have no interest, no knowledge, no nothing, have no idea what happens inside these walls, don't really care. It's not part of their life. Not bad people, just church isn't part of their life. That's the world we're quickly emerging into, okay? That means we have two choices. We can either say, woe is the world, or we can do something about it. We're in the one of the most difficult places to be in terms of global whatever. We're in a situation very much like the early church was. The official term now is post-Christian. In, in other words, more are not affiliated with church than are. Which means we have an incredible opportunity before us to share the love of God in the world. Right? I mean, think about those numbers. I think that's... In a way, what Jesus is saying in, the, in, in this passage. Times are going to be tough. Things are going to be weird. You know, church may not be popular. But it gives you an opportunity to testify. And why don't we do more testifying? What's the one word? Fear. Am I right? I don't have the words to say. You might think, right? What do I say? How do I, how do, I do that? How do I... You already have what you need. We all have what we need to share the love of Christ. We already have it. We've been given it already. And if we don't, God will give it to us when we need it. Because the way you interact with people is unique to you. And nobody can give you a formula of how that works. There just isn't one, because it's you. If you read a script, it is not as authentic as you talking with someone. Am I right? I mean, how many folks can identify the script on the other end of the phone immediately? It doesn't work. Not anymore. If it ever did. We have work to do. We have stories to tell. We have stories of hope and love and graciousness that we can share with the world. And you have your own, and we have the ones from the community. And, oh my goodness, we have stories to tell. And a whole bunch of people outside these walls who need to hear it. People that you see each and every day of your life. Our world may not look quite like the picture on the screen, but it feels like that sometimes, doesn't it? Sometimes it feels like our world's burning down around us. Sometimes it feels like we're in a battle. But our only weapon is the grace and hope given to us through Christ. That's the only one we need. 
That's the only preparation we need is that relationship with God to give us the strength and the words we need. And most importantly, our actions. Let us use the difficult opportunity, the difficult world we have around us. Let us see it as an opportunity to share. Care. Show others. Show others who this God is that we come together every week to worship. I think we have a great opportunity in front of us. So what are we going to do about it? Tell the story of hope in a world that needs hope. That's the only defense we need. Amen. One of the amazing things about our faith is, um, one, it's been around a really long time. (laughs) Christ was, what, 2,000 years ago-ish, more more or less, right? So the church in its early days worked out a lot of, worked through a lot of stuff about what was important and what wasn't in our faith. And um, that's why creeds are important, because they help remind us of what was really important, the basics that we can all agree on, And the Nicene Creed that we're about to say together is pretty old. The Council of Nicaea came up with this around 325. That's three digits. 325. That's a long time ago. But nothing has changed about the basics of our faith. They are still the same. And this is what's important. So let us recite this together to remind us of what really is important. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures, He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We are together and we see the list of those in front of us. You know, at our early service, we um, was brought up and mentioned that um, Freddie Curtis, um, you know, Donald's member of our congregation, his brother Freddie is active in so much in our community, is in um, is having a fairly serious health crisis and is at an MCV. Um, so um, prayers for, for Freddie and his family.
Are there others we need to lift up today? Yes, Gene Holmes is home. Yes. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jerry Nash and Bill Hudson are both in the annex right now. Yes. Sandra Tindall out of the hospital and home. Yes, okay. But at home and recovering. Yes. Family of Clarence Sneed. Celebrations. So it's a celebration of, of birthday for Emily and Brady. Yes. Excellent. So prayers. Good healing. Yes, absolutely. Good test results. That is a celebration. I celebrate that of all the novice dancers on stage last night, nobody fell off. (laughs) You think I'm joking, but I'm... (laughs) Did. Not the big trophy, though. All right, let us pray. Lord, we are together, and that's a good thing. We come together to celebrate you, to uplift each other, to, to be convicted and strengthened, to, to support each other so we can better be who you ask us to be. As part of that, we are mindful of those around us and those we've listed on the page and out loud, those who are not with us, those who are recovering or dealing with ongoing issues or, or grieving. We do ask for your presence to be felt in those lives. We know you're always around us and you're always present and you're always there. We just don't always feel it. And when we are weak and when we are hurting, it is even harder. But we thank you for that grace. We thank you for that presence, and we ask that especially these lives can feel it. Maybe we're the ones that need to bring you to them. Help us have the conviction to do that as well. It really is amazing what you do in our lives. So for each of these blessings, for each of these real connections with people, help us to continue to celebrate them as we figure out what it is together to be your people. All this we pray through Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. So as we continue our celebration of all God gives us and all God is in our lives, let us receive God's tithes and our offerings.
Because if we're honest, we recognize that everything we have, even our breath itself, is a gift from You. So we thank You for every gift You give us, for every ability, for every skill, for, for everything that makes us who we are, for every resource that allows us to live the way we do, for every love we have with others. Help us use each and everything You give us to share You, to tell Your story of hope to be your people even better than we already do. Pray all this in praise and thanksgiving and recognition of who you are and your grace given us, especially that experienced through Jesus Christ, the one who came to show us the way back to you, and the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. It is not to temptation. Deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Because what Jesus say? He's got us. Right? Let us go not in fear, but in strength. Let us go sharing the message of hope and love that he gives us. The world that needs it. No matter what happens, no matter what the world looks like, we cannot fear. And we can use anything as an opportunity to share that, share that hope. Let us go and be God's people together for the world. Amen. Amen.